Welcome to the Cover 4 Podcast. I'm Nolan King. That's Bradshaw Furlong, Luca Moya, and Jeff Wall. The big news today, Julio Jones wants out of Atlanta. I guess the news sort of broke on Fox Sports a little bit, uh, where Shannon Sharp sent him a call, and Julio said, I'm out of there. He is not going to be in Atlanta uh, you know, for the 2021 NFL season, which you know kind of surprised a lot of us, but I guess there was – news earlier and Bradshaw can fill us in on it that he requested a trade in the uh, last couple of months. Maybe he thinks Matt Ryan doesn't have it anymore and he wants to end up on a contender. Let's dive right in Bradshaw, your initial thoughts, hearing all this Julio Jones news and you know, what is going to be the direction for Atlanta, you know, losing their greatest receiver of all time and arguably probably a top five wide receiver in NFL history, uh, not going to be in ATL in 2021. That was a nice long preamble to get into that question. I like it. Um, I mean, it's it's sad. I'm sad, but it's not surprising. Um, like, I, I think it's more surprising that when now we found out, like, because everyone before this is like, oh, there's all these Julio rumors. It's like, oh, Atlanta's trying to get under the cap. They're trying to save all this money because they have to. Um, but everyone, like, but Atlanta fans, we all thought they're like, oh, if it's for cap purposes, why would they do that? They can just extend Grady Jarrett and then frees up all the cap space you need. You don't need to trade away your best player in franchise history, and you'll be fine. Turns out it was because Julio just didn't want to be there anymore, which, I, again, I understand Atlanta's not in a position to really win now. Even, like, best-case scenario this year, if they top out and have a great season, it's because the offense is going to do well and the defense is still going to hold them back. Like, they're going to be a fringe playoff team at their best, and they're still going to be in cap hell and it's just going to be a struggle to try and make the team better while Julio is still holding on to his like prime years. Like I know he had a, an injury plagued season last year, but that's not who we, that that's not who he's been the last few seasons. Um, but I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of okay with it. Like they have Calvin Ridley and Kyle Pitts and Russell Gage is going to be wide receiver too. And I mean, they'll get something nice back for him. So I'm, I'm 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 kind of okay with it. It's again, it's sad, but that's just kind of reality. Like the team's not very good, and he wants to win. I get it. Uh, Luca, when this news came out, you were probably uh, jumping for joy, hoping uh, Bill sent a couple picks for uh, Julio. But uh, mm-hmm. actually, what were your first thoughts when uh, this news broke? I was thinking, like, at first, I'm thinking, okay, like this is probably one of the better receivers we've seen in the last ten years since he's been drafted. We were on social media, like oh, why would they do that? Oh, Atlanta screwed. But it's like they're used to playing without him because he's, you know, he's been pretty banged up, especially last year. I think he only played like nine games. Brad, correct me if I'm wrong. I think he wasn't really there. I I drafted him in fantasy, so that's how I know. That's how I know. So um, he he was missing a lot of games. They they drafted kind of his replacement in Kyle Pitts. We'll see how that pans out. Calvin really, really took a step forward this year. So are they going to miss him? Probably. I mean, you're going to miss a guy like that. But at the same time, if they get the picks that they want for him, I think Atlanta's going to be perfectly fine. I was a little bit surprised because you don't see guys like this come available very often, but this is just an, a crazy offseason. First, we start we start with Deshaun Watson wanting out, then Aaron Rodgers all of last week, and now Julio Jones. We can see three superstars change teams, and it's like I can't picture Aaron Rodgers in a, another jersey but Green Bay. I definitely can't picture Julio in another jersey but the black and red. I think it's a little odd too, because usually we see these, you know, players when they get closer to the tail end of their career, we expect it. We go, okay, it's sad. It's bittersweet, but we know there's going to be another team out there who's going to want them. But man, this is, you know, an absolute superstar. Someone maybe not necessarily in their prime, but you know, 95 yards per game. That is the all time high, right? This guy is freaky, freaky led the league in receiving, I believe twice, uh, yards per game three times, two-time All-Pro, seven-time Pro Bowler. He's a freak. Uh, Jeff, your thoughts on the Julio news? Um, I guess it's not totally surprising in the sense that, like, you know, he's a guy with still a few of his prime years left. What's surprising is just sort of how he did it. Like, it is just the least Julio Jones thing I've ever seen. Because, okay, but first of all, anybody who thinks that this wasn't planned by Julio Jones, you have never seen Undisputed. You've never watched TV and you don't know how players try to, you know, work these situations. It was a really smart way to work the situation is just come out on a show that's very controversial, that's known for this sort of thing and just come out and say this sort of, and come out and do this in the most casual way you could possibly do it. But I think um, I just, my, my initial thoughts was like, I was just shocked at that mostly that he would do it like that, especially like after showing like, 
you know, very like, you know, professional undying loyalty. And this is like, you know, the least quote professional way to do something like this, but Hey, I mean, go do what you want to do. Julio Jones. Like he is one of the best receivers of all time. Top five, in my opinion. Uh, I think that he could probably fit any scheme. I feel like he's a very scheme diverse receiver. So that's going to be super fun to see whoever he ends up with. But I guess it's going to make someone an instant title contender, potentially, depending on who he goes to. That is uh, very, very true. Speaking of undisputed, I really didn't get the, hey, are you going to go to Dallas? Why Why Dallas? They don't he, was wearing, uh, he was wearing a top. Was he wearing a Dallas yeah, top? Yeah, okay, so no, no, I, I didn't see that, but it, it, it's just odd that, okay, I guess he's wearing a top, but, you know, from Alabama, right? It's not like this guy's born in, in Dallas, Texas. He's mm-hmm. always, you know, said he's grown up as a Cowboys fan or whatever the heck it is, but uh, obviously I don't think Dallas would be the team that Julio ends up going to, but let's get to that. Let, let's talk about who is going to be the team that maybe pulls the trigger or what we would like to see what we think will be the perfect situation for Julio Jones to get to that contender. And like Jeff said, push them to a Super Bowl. So Jeff, let's come back to you there. Who is going to be the team to uh, pull the trigger? Okay. Well, we might not like this Nolan, but um, there's a team up uh, in the Northern areas of the, uh, the NFL and most of America in the green Bay Packers. And Aaron Rodgers has been needing a guy to go along with, with, uh, with Devonte Adams and, you get a guy like Julio Jones, I think that will guarantee Aaron Rodgers staying there because they would be nearly impossible to stop. I mean, even if Julio Jones takes even just a tiny step down, just the tiniest step off of his off of his game, and he really has been had a very, you know, I wouldn't even say decline. I just think like, you know, he hasn't been getting those touchdowns or for whatever reason. But I think that would be the coolest one, personally. Like, I think that would be really, really fun to watch. Um and it makes Devonta Adams a lot more fun to watch as well because they're going to be racking up yards that can make Aaron Rodgers a, a, another MVP candidate again. So to me, that that one's the most fun. And also like being, you know, in Matt LaFleur system, that's somewhat similar to Kyle Shanahan's, you know, zone run and all that. So to me, that one's really cool, especially because it would, it would kind of, it just, the whole thing is, is cool because you're, you're like, you're shifting the balance of power of the NFL to the players, right? You know, so if you're a good player, you can kind of have these bargaining chips. And, and, and I mean, in a sense too, like it also enforces Aaron Rodgers thoughts, right. Where he wants to have a team built around him. And he's in, in, a, in that sense with Julio Jones saying this, forcing them to do something. And Hey, let's be honest here. They don't really do too much with their first round picks very often, except when they drafted him. So I think that would be a no brainer for me. Uh, well, I, I'd hate to see that, but I, I think it makes complete sense. If you can hold on to Aaron Rodgers and Julio Jones and him, you know, two of the elites in the NFL can, you know, text and say, Let, let's go win a ring. Like, get your guys to push for a trade for me, and I'm telling you, we will have a chance at a, a title. That would make a ton of sense. Uh, Bradshaw, what about you? What do you think is the – I know it's going to be tough seeing Julio gone, not wearing that ATL jersey, but what makes the most sense for you? Uh, I'm also just a quick little circle back to the Dallas – I'm just happy he said no to the Dallas Cowboys. He's like, uh, I'm not going there. I don't want to do that. I, just, I don't know why he wore the sweater then. I guess he just thought it looked good. Um so apparently they want to trade him to an AFC team. That's like the, the hope for the Falcons is that they want to trade him to an AFC team. Uh, so I'm going to go with the obvious one, uh, the Baltimore Ravens. That's the one that people have kind of been talking about for a long time was that the Baltimore Ravens, you know, they could use Julio Jones. Even uh, just imagine like Julio gets to teach Rashad Bateman everything he knows. Why would he want to go to a silly team like the Patriots who have no receivers that go up? Who's going to like, why would he want to teach anybody okay. on that team anything? Like, you know, hey, Nelson Aguilar, let me teach you something here, buddy. You're not going to do anything in the NFL. You're terrible. Um, I, I, okay. I, Rashad, I think Rashad Bateman and Julio Jones would be a nice, fun duo. Marquise Brown as well, get, you know, take a lot less pressure off them that way. Uh, give Lamar Jackson another guy to throw to. So I think Baltimore would be. It would, it would be the easiest on my heart, and I think it would be the most fun for the NFL. That would be an absolute blast, right? Julio Bateman, Brown in the slot, Mark Andrews still, the offensive line hopefully a little bit better this season. J.K. Dobbins looks like he's going to be a star in the NFL. Oh, that would be a ton of fun. Uh, Luca, you seemed upset. that uh, <laughs> Because that Brad, be- Brad rips on the pads, but do we forget that he actually supported this team? Yeah, for so, a- so, I know, so I know better than anybody why I yes. wouldn't want him to go there. I should know better than anyone. But, like, it's an historic franchise. Let us oh, guys God. back up, Brad, and let us trade for Julio I don't Jones. Want, I don't want Julio Jones, the end of Julio Jones' career, to be sullied 
by Mac Jones. Oh, and Mac yeah. Jones missing him on deep crossers. Like, oh, and Mac Jones' bum arm couldn't get it to him again. Darn, you know, you, what a we, shame. You see, Mac Jones is going to pan out. Because it's not going to be Mac Jones. It's going to be Cam Newton, okay? Cam Newton's coming back. Oh, even wait, worse. Wait, wait, even though. worse. Well, even well, worse. Well, At least Mac Jones will get it five yards close to him. But Cam's, well, Cam's not getting it past the line of scrimmage. Okay, you know what? We'll see this year. Do we believe in Greg Roman either, though? That's my question. I don't think I believe in Greg Roman. We're going to trade for a fine job. Gonna... It's just Marquise Brown can't be a number one receiver, the poor guy. Okay, all right. Luca, l- l- let's get So <laughs> Your team, you think the Patriots okay. would be the I, ideal fit? I, I, uh, I think I, it might be a little bit of bias. In that I can, oh, I just a little bit. That. A little bit of bias. <laughs> it's not... Uh, Listen, Nolan, if you didn't have Justin Jefferson, you'd be all in for Julio Jones, okay? You just hit last year. <laughs> we need receiving help. And if we get Julio Jones, I think it's crazy to see, like, New England's receiving core ranked dead last in separation. Uh, this year they struggled again. Cam Newton obviously uh, declined after he got COVID, new system. We, we can make all the excuses we want. But if he comes to New England, right, they got – Two really good tight ends. Cam Newton loves throwing to big body receivers. We saw that in Greg Olson. Uh, Tiggin wasn't really a, you know, you're not known for being a big Kelvin body. Benjamin, Kelvin, Kelvin Benjamin, baby. Kelvin Benjamin. There you go. See, he's back in the league now. Okay, so we're going to see. Uh, it's going to be a different Patriots offense. And what Jeff said, I think he can fit anywhere. I think the team to pull the trigger is, is Belichick. We've seen it happen before. Like, he took a chance on Antonio Brown. He took a chance on Josh Gordon. Why not go out and get Julio Jones? I know he's a little bit banged up, but... New England, we, we know, we saw it. Bill hates losing. He went all out this offseason, and he signed – I'll agree with Brad here. I glory probably he overpaid for him. But Nikhil Harry, that first-round receiver that's been a flunk, maybe he can help him. Who cares about Rashad Bateman? Put, put Nikhil Harry back on the map, okay? Make him the guy that they thought he was going to be. Will that happen? Probably not. But having a guy like that, not only does it help out your offense, it helps out your locker room as well. Like He's a great leader. Um, this is a – it baffled me the way it, it kind of went out on live television so t- saying that he won out, like Jeff said. But I think he will help out New England if they trade for him. And a lot of players in the past said they want to come to New England to play for Tom Brady, but they didn't want to come to play for Bill Belichick. But I think with the roster that he's created around them, I think they're going to be competitive again this year. And if they get Julio, this could be another step towards maybe being taken more seriously. And hopefully Cam has a bounce back here. We don't have to see Mac Jones for another year or two. I'm going to say, and sorry, Luca, I don't think that would happen. I'd be stunned. And I think Atlanta fans would burn the stadium down if they traded Julio Jones to New England Patriots. I I, I get it. And I I think New England would love to have him there. I'm going to go two different directions. I'm going to say both in the AFC. I said kind of before the show, I think Tennessee Titans makes a ton of sense. It's AJ Brown and nobody, right? Like, that's AFC. That's a team that needs another weapon. Ryan Tannehill, you know, we know what Derrick Henry can do. We know what AJ Brown can do, but you know, he had Corey Davis who had his best season yet. He's gone. He's out the door getting Julio in there. That'd be terrific. And especially in a division where there's a chance for any of those teams, except for Houston to potentially win it. Another one that's under the radar. And I was just thinking about this and I said, this would be absolute money. Los Angeles chargers, Keenan Allen, probably top three route runner in the league. And you get Julio Jones there. For, I, Jeff's so mad. Jeff's so mad. But it, here's the but, thing. But what, what more, how many more receivers do they need? Like, like it's like it's like you never want to see the real Justin Herbert, Nolan. You never want to see the real guy. We've already seen the real Justin We've Herbert. Seen We've it. already seen I'm him. Kidding. He, he, he turned here. Jalen Guyton into a, a little bit of a uh, sneaky fantasy player. So you get Julio Jones, Keenan Allen. Mike Williams is a fine 50-50 ball player. Not a great route runner. He's not going to kill you after the catch, right? Like, He's simply a 50-50, you know, possession type of receiver. And that's fine. If those are the three guys, and Josh Palmer, the rookie I like, I believe they took him in the third round to maybe get in there on a couple reps like that too. But Justin Herbert with Julio Jones and Keenan Allen. Remember, they don't really have a tight end threat, right? I believe they took, what, was it Trey McKitty or something? Or maybe they got Jared, or it was Jared Cook. They tried to get in there uh, as a free agent signing. It's nothing sexy there over the middle of the field at the tight end position. Julio and Keenan Allen, good luck. Justin Herbert MVP train would be riding high there for Jeff. Uh, th- that would be, I, I think Tennessee's more realistic, but I, I do think uh, Chargers could make some noise uh, potentially. I think they'd be fine giving up a first rounder, right? I, I think they expect to be a little bit better this season. Uh, so that one makes sense to me. 
Uh, I'll go back to Bradshaw. Bradshaw, your final thoughts. You can give a little prayer oh. uh, for Julio <laughs> Jones and his time in Atlanta. Let, let's go quick. Your favorite memory of Julio uh, with the Falcons. Oh, wow. Uh, Don't do this to him. That's tough. <laughs> we, can get the, I mean, we can get the music I mean, going. I do have, I do have, like, I mean, I, I, it's funny, as I open my laptop today to start recording, I have the, my screen, my lock screen on my laptop is the, the famous photo of Julio, like, flying in to, like, hit the pylon. Uh, mm-hmm. So that, that, that one's up there. And then obviously his catch in the Super Bowl against the Pats was just, just absolutely bananas, even though obviously they didn't win that game. Uh, an absolutely bananas catch. And I just, he just I, like Lucas, he just seems like such a, a good guy. And I'm, it's going to be really tough to miss him because it's always cool to see like the training camp videos. And he's all, like, they always like show him like mic'd up and he's teaching all the younger receivers, even teaching Calvin Ridley. So even though Calvin Ridley's a star now. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be sad. Like he's a really, he's, he's, I remember there was a tweet that came out a couple of weeks ago from this Atlanta uh, Hawks basketball reporter who said that Trey Young was like the most influential athlete in Atlanta sports history. And everyone's like, that's nuts. Okay. Uh, just completely ignoring the fact that there is Julio Jones standing right there in Mercedes Benz Stadium, who has been infinitely more influential over the Atlanta sports scene in recent memory than Trey Young will ever be, uh, even though he had a very nice game winner uh, last night. But regardless, uh, it's going to be sad without Julio, but Calvin Ridley's ready to take his place and is ready to shut Nolan up after last year. He said Calvin Ridley wasn't ready to be a number one wide ride receiver. Most hundred yard games in the NFL last year. I think he had eight, 800 yard games. Monster. He Monster. did. Brash, I'll take that one on the chin. And another, <laughs> uh, another underrated Julio moment before we uh, say goodbye. 15 and 0 Carolina Panthers going to the just gonna say, just and uh, he absolutely mosses Luke Keekley and then you know storms for whatever it was 50 60 yard touchdown to uh blow the doors off that game and that one was really really fun. I think he did he go for he's you know, had he a couple for, how many 300 he's had, a, he's, had a, he's had a few just monster games. He had like 250 he or something. Carolina, yeah, he destroys Carolina. Yeah, he had yeah. a 300 yard game against Green Bay, I'm pretty sure. Was it mm-hmm. Green Bay? Uh, I think it was Carolina. I think it was Carolina. Carolina? I believe Maybe it was Carolina. He's, yeah, he's he's a monster. <laughs> Man, the NFC South, which is maybe the best, uh, I would probably say, division with uh, receivers. They're going to lose a, a good one, uh, sadly. The best one. Uh, guys, the best one. Uh, that's going to do it. Cover 4 podcast covering the Julio Jones saga. We will see maybe in the coming weeks if he's on a new team. But uh, definitely keep your eye on uh, Lingo Sports and the Cover 4 podcast for more stuff coming out in the coming weeks. Uh, we're going to get some fantasy stuff, some predictions, some bold predictions. Uh, maybe some awards coming up. So lots of great content coming out. So make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Bradshaw, Luca, Jeff, I'm Nolan. We'll see you guys soon. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please drop a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe to Lingo Sports and Lingo News for a whole lot more just like this.